What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals, and in this video, we're gonna be doing another lighting breakdown. A couple weeks ago, I was on set with Waves Media doing some talking head interview style setups for a corporate office, and that's actually the location we were shooting in, so we had to deal with a lot of the things that you can't really control, which is people walking around, a lot of the lighting, we can't just turn it off. We also forgot our six by six frame at the office, so we had to work with a smaller softbox thing, but you'll see how we get that set up and how we made it work and get a very similar look. So let's get into the breakdown. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Okay, so that was our talking head setup. Now we're gonna jump to a quick behind the scenes view just so you can sort of see everything that we had going on. So we got our camera set up right here. We have our key light off to camera right. We have our edge light over on the left side here. And then you can see we have all of these windows in the background. And we also had these overhead lights up above and it's kind of some light spilling in from these other rooms and other areas. We also had a T-mark on the ground right here for our talent so they knew where to stand and then we could light to that and then we could just have people come in and get their shot. So jumping in a little bit tighter to our camera setup, we were shooting on the Canon C300 Mark II. We were shooting in UHD 4K, so 3840 by 2196. And then we were shooting on the Sigma 18 to 35 T2 cine zooms. Now we were at just a little bit under a T2.8 at about a 27 and a half millimeters, like you can see right here. If you wanna see the rest of our camera settings, that along with the rest of our setup and all of the gear that we use is gonna be linked to in the description below so you can check it out. So now jumping to our first shot and sort of where we started. So this is, we set the camera up, we have no lights set up, really nothing has been done to this image yet and we haven't started adjusting any lights. So the first thing that we're gonna do is analyze some of the problem areas. Now right away we're seeing some blown out areas in the back, like on this window. We have some pretty harsh highlight areas on the chair right here. And we're getting this really bad cast that's sort of bouncing up from the lights overhead and giving us a underfill, kind of a moody and scary light, being lighter at the bottom here and then sort of fading off at the dark towards the top. So we get a few things that we gotta work with here and sort of clean up to get this image looking really nice. The first thing that we're gonna take a look at is the overexposed windows in the back. Now, luckily these windows had shades on them, so we were able to just pull those shades closed. So if I toggle these on and off, you can see how I cut down that overexposed window, as you can see right in the back here as I toggle these on and off. So you can see the shades getting closed and then getting rid of all of that overexposed blown out area. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is actually turn off all of the overhead lights. That's gonna get rid of any of that bounce that's coming off the ground and that really bad color cast. Because these aren't film lights, they're not color calibrated to make your skin look good, to make colors really represent how they actually look. So we're gonna turn those off and you'll notice that we actually weren't able to turn all of them off. You see a sort of highlight spot here on the chair which is coming from one of those overheads and we're gonna deal with that a little bit later. But if we look at that wide shot again and I go back out here, you can see some of those overhead lights right here. One, two, three, four, and five. And those were all just coming down and bouncing off the ground and giving us a color cast from the cement on the ground as well as just not being color accurate lights. You also might be able to see that this one right here in the middle is the one that can't turn off and you can see the light is still on it. That's just a security light. So a lot of office buildings and places have security lights that you're not gonna be able to turn off because they're set to always be on. So you'll see how we deal with that a little bit later on. So going back to the shot, we have our lights turned off now, so we're a little bit too dark. So what we're gonna do to sort of bring that exposure up is throw on our key light. And now we just have a light placed right outside of frame right. And that's coming over and giving us our nice soft wrapping light around our talent. We're getting some good key light highlights in the eyes, as well as just an overall really soft, nice light. Now this light is a Felix Q1000. So if you jump over into the position where the talent is sitting, this is the light right off to their left. You can see the light shooting into this diffusion. We actually forgot our frame, so we just stole this from a softbox and then we put it on a boom pole and sort of just clamped it on and we were able to shoot the light into that to get our really nice soft light that is just outside of frame right. Now if I jump over to the back side of the camera, you can see a little bit better. So our talent is standing right down here. We have our key light shooting into this softbox. And one thing that was really nice about having the Felix Q8 specifically is that it has a zoom control so you can actually focus the beam in. This was really important because we didn't have a huge like eight by softbox that we were able to focus the beam in and not get it falling over or sort of like wrapping around and having any hard light hit our talent. 
So I just zoomed it in and then we were able to cut that off so we didn't get any overexposed areas on the subject's face or on their arm or on their lower half that we were actually seeing in the frame. Going a little bit closer to the light, you can see what our settings were. So we were at about 4,060 Kelvin. Our power was at 24, so we had quite a ways to go on this if we wanted to brighten it up a little bit more, but it was getting a little bit too moody and some of the other areas were getting too dark. So we decided to go with 24 power, about 4,000 Kelvin to balance out some of the tungsten light that we were seeing bouncing around as well as the daylight from the windows that you can see in the back. So going back to the shot where we added the key light, the next thing that we're gonna do is add in an edge light or a rim light. And if you look on the left side of his face, right over here, you're gonna be able to see that light come on just a tiny little bit, just a hint to give a little bit of separation from this background area, give a little bit of edge on him and on his shoulder, and really just like make it pop and add a little bit of dimension to it. And that light that was giving him the edge was just a small dray cast on a stand. We had it balanced a little bit cooler, so we were getting more of a daylight shift to it to sort of motivate from the windows that were behind him. But that was just coming in and really just touching up and giving a little bit of separation on the edge of his face. So after we got that edge light on him, the last thing that we needed to do was get rid of this edge light on the chair, which was coming from that security light that won't ever be able to be turned off. What we ended up doing with that is just throwing a small diffusion on it. So let me show you what it looked like after we did it and then I'll show you how we accomplished it. So there it is with the diffusion in that light and then there it is without it. So you can see we're actually solving a couple different problems here. The first one is that that light coming down is giving a lot of red bounce to this wall. So when we're able to turn that off or diffuse it and sort of lower the intensity, we're getting rid of a lot of that red bounce. And it's also not giving as much of a highlight spot on the chair. So it allows our eye to go back to the talent instead of being drawn down there. Now, what we did for this was actually pretty simple. You do wanna be careful with this because it's not always the safest way to do it, but we added in a piece of paper. Like you can see here, we just stuffed it up in there. So we're getting rid of that hard beam that's coming straight down and diffusing it with a piece of paper. Now, why you wanna be careful is that sometimes these lights can be really hot, and if you put some sort of paper in there, it could actually catch fire. So we did this for a short period of time. I think it was only in there for about five minutes, but you wanna keep an eye on that, and you wanna make sure that it's not getting too hot. Now, let me go back, and I'll show you again exactly what we did. So there it is with the light off. There it is with that light on. So you can see we just cut it down. It allows your attention to go back to the talent again, like I said, and we're getting rid of a lot of that orange and red bounce from the chair. So I think that's pretty much it. That's gonna wrap it up for this lighting breakdown. Let me do a quick rundown of all of the steps. So starting at the top, we had nothing. Then we closed the shades in the background to get rid of those highlights. Then we turned off all the overheads so we're not getting that bounce off the ground. Then we turn on our key light, which is coming from the right side of frame to give us our nice soft wrapping light. After that, we're gonna throw on that edge light just to give them a little bit of separation from the background. And then lastly, we put some diffusion on that security light and it really cuts down on all of the red shift in the image as well as that bright highlight on the chair that just sort of draws your eye in the wrong direction. So that's gonna wrap it up for this lighting breakdown. If you guys wanna see all of the gear that we used, all of the lights and cameras, it's all gonna be linked to in the description below. If you have any questions about this setup, make sure to leave those in the comments. If you wanna see more of these types of videos, there's gonna be a playlist at the end of this one. And also make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one.